a good day to you. Uh, today also the Lord's Word is looking at teens and their future and also the great purpose of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the Epistle of Ephesians is full of the purpose of the Lord for the Church. Uh, so Ephesians 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all are equal, important. Ephesians 3 has this that the Church will display the wisdom for principalities and powers. So Ephesians 3.10 says, So uh, that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Uh, so uh, often people think when you say rulers and principalities, it's all about dark powers and demons. It doesn't have to be so because rulers and principalities uh, the heavenly ones, the angelic ones also are waiting and listening to the wisdom of the church because Psalm 103 says they are waiting to go do what God's word is cited, decreed and declared, appropriated and applied by the church. So Psalm 103 ends like this, verse 20, Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength who perform his word. Uh, the prelude to that is verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his sovereignty rules over all. How? Saints agreeing and declaring the word of God and angels go do it. Uh, just the way Psalms 91 says God will command his angels to take care of him. And when in the temptation of our Lord Jesus Christ, Satan suggested to him he wouldn't do it. But uh, he told uh, Peter, I can call down a legion of angels. You don't have to put your sword out uh, at, in the Garden of Gethsemane. So angels are available to us also because we have a guardian angel. They watch over us. They camp around us, those who fear the Lord. But what are they up to? Bless the Lord, you his angels. Psalm 103 verse 20. Mighty in strength who perform his word. Obeying the voice of his word. So, it's not only God who speaks his word. We are supposed to speak his word for salvation for our loved ones, for prosperity of our nation, for the well-being of our government. We speak the word and angels will go do the word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts who serve him doing his will. So when we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Whom you think is moving around the angels. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. So last, uh, yesterday in our Friday, uh, the Seba meeting, that is uh, the city bless anoint rich meeting. We really had the anointing flooding us. We felt as if we anointed the headship of Christ in our worship and intercession. It was a glorious time, reverential time, explosive time. Our worship team so, did so well, and our preacher was Dr. Jahan Disla. He did so well, and in between I did some invocation just to tie the whole thing together because we are in a city gate. As a Friday, 7 p.m., people are returning home. Dad's mom's returning home. Not only that, Friday, 7 p.m., there's another part of the city is revving up for party time. Back again, yes. COVID had shut things down. Still, it's quite mild in Colombo, but you know what it is now time on uh, when it is Friday time once upon a time it was thank God it's Friday now upon a time oh it is you know what it is so we stand at the city gate and we bless anoint and reach our nation reach our city in so doing because the anointing rose so much and the worship was so intense we really felt that the crown of anointing came upon us this uh, Old Testament uh, thing about the high priest, then we felt that <clears throat> as Jesus takes headship in our ministry, in our midst, when two, three gather, 20, 30 gather, 200, 300 gather, Jesus takes headship in our midst. And then some, Ephesians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God who has blessed us in heavenly places with spiritual blessing. This happened. So God is blessed and the same Greek word, we are blessed as God is blessed. And when God is blessed, he blessed us. What a reciprocal relationship. So the crown of anointing that our high priest carries, he carries it for us. 
and down his garment to the lowest part of his skirt and the hem of his garment to the least of his children, the anointing flows, crown of anointing. And when that happens, our nation, our city is flooded over by the crown of anointing that came upon the body of Christ in one place. Or in many places, who knows, as time goes on, uh, so many will take to a Siba meeting. What is Siba? Uh, city bless and ninth reach meeting. It's primarily for God to come through for his people and for our city and for the economics of our city. That's an, our nation, yes. This is how we uh, look at our Friday evening meeting. Or welcome again, uh, Friday 7 p.m. We are always at it. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, so this is at 374 so it was such a anointing so the crown of anointing came and we felt the headship of Christ was crowned and when he is crowned that means his body is in alignment and we almost salute our commander in chief <clears throat> the Lord holds and all his strength flowed through the meeting into us and from us, into our icos, into our part of the city, into our into our poga and into our patch of earth. When we say, "Thy kingdom come on my patch of earth, Thy will be done on my, my patch of earth as it is in heaven," we were really able to say this. So that's a bit of a Friday moment, and today we are premiering a teen time, teen quest and curry. Uh, video and by next Saturday we want to have it on site as well as online. Uh, Saturday 4.30, look out for Teen Quest and Query. That will be very useful for you to get your children into family time, study time, God time, what a lot God has for kids. Uh, so we uh, we felt this yesterday also, I dwelt on this, that it was a time God is going to give 17 years, 7 years for teens, yeah. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. From 13 to 19, that they will have every year a full sheaf. That's from Joseph's vision at 12. He had a he had a dream, and father gave him a multicolored robe, and then his teen years, the our teen years to be full. It's a full sheaf. That's, uh, that's a dream Pharaoh had and Joseph had to interpret it and Joseph uh, was sold at the age of 17 but he was the vice regent of F uh, Pharaoh, the largest empire, most powerful empire of the time and only next to Pharaoh, only second to Pharaoh by the age of 30. That's Joseph 19. Uh, but today I'm looking at every teen, those teen years, every year. <clears throat> Excuse me, may they have a full sheaf from the Father in heaven. Uh, so that's how we felt we, anoint, we felt anointed, the crown of anointing we received. And then we went to some, uh, and this morning also I could see, I could feel uh, the Lord's pleasure and uh, upon the teens, upon the family, the Lord's pleasure. How he is delighting to do uh, what he really wants to do. Uh, for all the teens who would know the Lord. So we must really go for the teens, yes. Not that we are not going for 20s. Also, we, might, we, we want to go for the uh, teenies, those who are younger than that. Uh, but we, uh, we are looking at this God's promise from Psalm 128. When the mother is in the house, your wife shall be like a fruitful wine. Psalm 128, 3, that's the mother. Within your house, your children like olive plants around your table. So the mo the motherness, the mother part of it, make the children so safe in the house and internally providing. And she is attending on their green olive grow. They are growing in internal prosperity, full of sap, full of oil, because the mother is nurturing. Of course, all under the reverential fear covering anointing of the father how blessed is everyone who fears the lord who walks in his ways and uh, how blessed is the man who would be uh, over this house behold for thus shall the man be blessed who fears the lord what's the blessing his wife will be fruitful wife will be like the uh, 
uh, the, 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 the ruby of Proverbs 31, and she will have so many, many things going for the family by her own um, industry. Yes, and she is attending on them like olive plants around the table. That's the mother doing. Then the father comes in in Psalm 127. And now, of course, they work together, but I'm just pitching. What does the father do especially? Father is building the house. Only the Lord builds the house. They labor in vain. So father is guarding the city. Only the Lord guards the city, the watchman. So father, the watchman, building the house and guarding the city. The two go together. So building God's house and building your house and guarding the city is patriarchal and keeping the table and nurturing children like green olive shoots is matriarchal. Two together, that's the family is so important. So I want to ask you, this today is Saturday. So this passing week, where tomorrow is a new week with the Lord's Day. But how did you build the Lord's house? How did you build your house? If there's any penitence to do, you have to do it. Just now I wrote, dear parent, timetables with targets, tuition, so, uh, schedule, study time, but with no embracing fun activity which you do with kids. We'll make Jack a nasty boy and Jill a sullen girl. Because when you obey your time slot in the family timetable, they will obey all other time slots. Uh, if you want this quote, please, I'm Dr. Lyle Mendes, please send a WhatsApp to 77 If you are abroad, plus 94 You only have to say, please send me the Dear Parent post. It's also on my Facebook timeline. So when the father, what, what did the father do? He's building the house. Uh, and, he, uh, and he's building God's house and he's watching over the city that part of the work he's responsible for his watchman and his watchman of his family and his watchman with God. God is building the city. God is watching over the city when Christian men are building God's house and watching over their work. Yes. Uh, so behold, the children are a gift to the Lord. Psalm 127 verse 3, the fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hands of a warrior. So this is the father's work, the shooting of the arrow, sending forth the, uh, your son and daughter from season to season. You take aim, the bow, God and you pulling together, the bow of your life call and what is your best shot, best career, launching them from 0 to 5, 6 to 10. 10 to 14, 10 to 13, then 13 to 19, a real arrow shot. Did you understand that? May you be energized for this. This is your first career. So that, that the, you are the one who is giving the strength, the accuracy, the body of the child's life, competence, confidence, and then sharpening the arrow, sharpening the arrow head, you understand, with your words, with your spiritual instruction, with your activity, with your skill, competence, training of your son. You can't leave it, leave it all to teachers and sports coaches. You have to do it also. You understand? So you are the one who is shooting him from destiny to destiny, season to season, track to track, and he's waiting for you to come and do that. What a wonderful thing. Yes, that father at home is such a wonderful thing. Behold, the children are a gift of the Lord. Fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. So may you attend on it. So how blessed is the man whose kiva is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies at the gate. So when your son and daughter, you have trained them like that, arrow shot, they will not be fearful of outside enemies. Dad gives confidence. Dad gives, trains them in boundary taking. God bless you today. So it's a, it's a very nice day to uh, give a thanksgiving service to the Lord. Thanksgiving, thank you to the Lord, because tomorrow we are beginning, the Lord, beginning with the Lord's Day, we are beginning a new day new week and don't miss your Sunday in the house of God where you are called to serve. God bless you.